Welcome to this week's video. Why is it typical? It's been lovely and sunny and warm and the moment I go to make myself some, I want to make some loungers easy so I'm hoping they'll be easy to sew. I want to make some loungers for my chairs out in the back garden so I can sit and chill and be comfy. But it's gone cold <laughs> and I think it's due to rain. Typical. Anyway, let's go into hot press. I know I have a blanket that I want to um, recycle the fabric. Hands up who has too many blankets in the house. Bit of a blanket buyer, bit of a blanket hoarder. I have to stop myself. I have a blankie Oh, look at the state of me hot press. Anyway, I have, oh, this quilted blankie, but it's actually from Penny's Hun. I got this years ago. I do love it, but I have another one that's similar. I think I got this on sale in Penny's. Primark, if you're in the UK. One side is this. The other side is this. Like, I think I got it on sale for 10 euros years and years ago, but I'm going to use this material to create, I should have enough for two. Yeah, cause it's, I've loads of fabric. Like I probably even have enough fabric to do cushions. Like not bean bags, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna recycle this and we're gonna make some outdoor, like seat pad cushions. Hope that makes sense. Sure, you'll, you'll see anyway. First thing I gotta do is measure, measure the chair, and then you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. Let's go. So I began by measuring the length of the chair to determine how long I wanted my cushion to be. And then I also measured the width. And I'm also lolling at me using a good old builder's measuring tape and not my usual sewing tape. But sure, here we are and it did the job. I then transferred the measurements onto my old blanket and then I cut the first strip out. Once I had the first strip out, I went back to the chair and I just laid it on it to see like was it too big, was it too wide? Now I did leave an extra half an inch for the seam allowance. Um, so once I was kind of happy with that, I then used that first piece that I cut as my template to cut out the rest of the pieces. So you're gonna have a front piece and a back piece and then we're gonna make handles. The handles are totally optional, but if you want to kind of carry this or fold it over um, and have it as like a little portable picnic cushion, then the handles are really cute. I just want to share a mistake I kind of made because my fabric is too thick. So you would have saw me just there, fold this in half, put it through, um, stitch at the end, and then the idea would be to pull it the right way out. But because my fabric has padding in it, because it is a um, kind of quilted material, this is too thick and your girl can't get it through. So I sandwiched two of the pieces together left the ends open because these ends are going to be tucked into the piece anyway. So I have, I just need to iron this. Um, so I have a thicker strap that is going to look like this and it's going to be on uh, either end of the cushions. 
This is also optional because the reason why I'm sticking a little handle on is so that you can fold the cushion over on itself and you'll have two handles and then you can pick the handles up and walk off with your little cushion. So it's like a portable kind of cushion. Well, it can be a picnic cushion as well. So you can fold it in half. So that is, these will stitch in to the thing. Nice little grip on it. It's still, I'd say it could do with being a, a little bit smaller, but I want to use this material. So that method does work, but if your fabric is too chunky, no. So I have some, I do have some more scrap of the edge of the blanket that I can make. I have to, I'm making two cushions, I need to make three more of these. So here I am just making the straps and um, the final way that I've done them. So I did the right size of the fabric facing each other, a straight stitch down one side, a straight stitch down the other side. I turned it the right way out and you'll also see that I did a decorative top stitch. When material is kind of chunky like that, I think this top stitch just gives it a lovely finish. <laughs> Just watch carefully to see how I put the handles. Make sure that they are facing inwards so that when we stitch all around this piece and you turn it the right way out, the handles are going to be on the outside. I know that this can be confusing for beginner sewers because I used to get confused by this as well. Um, so this is how you position the handles before you stitch around. Mr. Blackbird is very intrigued by what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see him in the corner. He'll come in shot now. So do leave a gap on the side so we can turn this the right way out. So I'm going to leave a decent size gap, maybe like two hands full. And I'm gonna stitch all the way around. Leave the opening, turn it the right way out. When I'm going over the handles, because the fabric is quite thick, I might just do a bit of a, a reverse stitch when I go over the handles. And I'm gonna leave a good half an inch um, seam allowance on this. So I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm going to go all the way around, leave the gap, and then we're gonna flip it out. And then we're gonna stuff it. Just before I turn the fabric the right way out, I'm just clipping the corners and I'm also just taking off any excess bulky material on the sides. Just be careful not to snip too close to your line of stitching or you will weaken the seam and your stitch could unravel. The things you said, you said to me, to me, it seems like you like me too. We can take it slow, make sure we do this right. Cancelled all my plans to be with you tonight. Tonight. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building camp mystery. Things. 
There's no need to rush, so let's just take our time. Dropping everything, cause you're stuck on my mind. My mind. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building camp. Mystery. I don't think I ever wanna go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think we were meant to be. Oh, we were meant to be. Oh, we were meant to be. Oh, we were meant to be. So. Just sit with me, talking through the night and through the morning, building chemistry. I don't think I ever wanna go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think. Oh my god, I'm absolutely loving my cushion. So that was a happy accident that those pillows just fit into it, but it's comfy in my chair. I'm after me just taking pictures of it folded and sitting on it. I like how it's portable and you can also lie on it. Well, I'm quite short, so if you wanted to make one longer, um, if you're taller, you would have to adjust the measurements so that you can lie on it. But I can lie on this one. And yeah, if you fold it out, then two people can sit on it. I think it'd be great for the boot of your car if you have like a last minute picnic or something. The sun has finally come out as well. I don't know how long it's gonna last, so. But I'm delighted with me bit of sewing today. Goes without saying, just adjust the, me the measurements. Um, if you have like different sized Adirondack chairs. Um, people ask me where I got these for anybody who is new. I got these off a local seller on adverts.ie. He was hand making them. I don't know if he is still on it, but if you just search Adirondack chairs on adverts.ie if you are local, um, then you might be able to find him. He was making them himself though. And he was selling, I think I paid a hundred, which is really cheap for these. I'd say he was out the door at that price because I think when I saw them in garden centers, they were like three, 400 euro just for one chair and they're wood as well. These ones are nice and light. Um, I'm not sure what timber he used. They are really comfy though, <laughs> really comfy. So if you too want to make yourself a new cushion, let me know how you get on if you give it a bash. I did see something like this in one of the garden centers, like these kind of cushions, but obviously they weren't the size of this. I think they were like 50 or 60 quid. So if you can get your hands on an old blanket, maybe in the secondhand shop, charity shop, thrift shop, whatever you want to call it, you could totally do this yourself with like two pillows, even two old pillows, stick them in. And it's just for yourself, like, so yeah. I'm going to finish my coffee now with me, with me new cushion. Good morning, I'm just waiting on my boiled egg on the breakfast menu this morning. Waiting for me, I'll walk a while. I'm bringing, oh, I am bringing you two one of my creative besties, um, book, launch, book launches. Her book comes out on Monday and she's having a book launch today, but it's also like an upcycling kind of workshop. You've probably, I have a really, really old video with me and Joanne when I went down, when she had her studio and I did a painting workshop, like you're talking 2018 maybe. Um, so I'm so proud of her because she's after putting together this event herself. Um, like I don't think her publisher kind of helped her out much. Like she did all this herself. And I know she's after making like little cute goodie bags. I think we're doing painted, I think they're furniture legs and she has them upcycled into candles. And we're going to be painting them, which is deadly. And it, like she sources all this stuff herself. Um, even down to making the goodie bags, like she was using her Cricut machine and everything. Um, so the effort that has gone into this. So I wanna show support, proud friend moment. I actually ordered her book, it's on Amazon. Um, but I think she has a copy in the goodie bag. So if I ha when my pre-order comes, I might even do like a little giveaway with that one um, because I'll end up having two copies. So I might do it on Instagram, but just 
see with the old Instagram and anytime you do a giveaway and all these fake accounts start popping up, my only Insta, they finally gave me a blue verified tick as well. So at least you know the one with the blue tick is the legit one. Um, I think there's like a dainty, a couple of dainty diaries, Instagrams, none of them are me. I'm, I just have one Insta, ah, dainty dress diaries with the blue tick. Finally, Insta gods, you've given me the blue tick. Um, and the same with YouTube. I have a verified thing on YouTube, so it's Dainty Diaries with the tick. Anyone else tries to impersonate? We don't know them, sis. We don't know them. So the event is on in town this morning. So I think she's doing like a breakfast and a crafting thing, um, which is really cool. And Karen is coming. I haven't seen, I've been chatting to Karen, but I feel like I haven't seen Karen in ages because she was away in Spain. Um, so Karen's coming and there's a couple of other like crafty creative people. Um, so it's going to be like a nice group as well. I, know, I normally don't go to kind of many events and stuff because I like to just go to, if it's like plants upcycling and crafting, I'll go. <laughs> Anything else? I have no interest. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna park in the Fino this morning. Um, the venue is near the Guinness factory, but it's only 10 in the morning, the event, so I won't be going to bleeding Guinness factory like, Jesus. It's me waffling for this morning. The yeah, is starting to giddy up. Now my days of fashion blogging are well and truly behind me, but I did get this earlier um, for, for summer. It's from, oh, is it new look, I think, but if it's still in stock, I'll put a link and it'll be in the, description and I'm just gonna wear my little white converse with it because it's like grand and flowy I don't feel too restrictive I can walk into town and walk back so yeah I'm feeling very summery today me and Karen got lost and then played a game of sorry about the sound my mic must have felt actually it's probably at the end of my bag and um, we were on the phone to each other on like live location. live location can you see this and I was like yes I can and then I thought you were crossing the road to me but I had to cross the road and I was like why isn't she crossing the road and, and you were going, like why isn't she crossing the road we would be anyway. the worst like fucking if we TV had to do people. um what's that thing with escape room escape room or <laughs> Or hunted. A challenge hunted, yeah, we'd be like, ah. <laughs> um, but the venue is up here, so we're nearly, nearly here. So the event was in this really cool place, like right beside the Guinness factory. I think it was called Digital Court, and it's part of the Digital Hub. So just for anyone who's maybe looking for like a cool artsy venue, but inside it was like an art studio, so there was actually like art supplies and stuff. So I wonder, do they actually host? Um, do people host classes here? But the venue was really, really cool, really relaxed, perfect for the vibe of what we were doing. So it was a lovely morning just catching up with everybody that I hadn't seen in ages and also meeting people for the first time. I think sometimes when you see people on Instagram and I think you just assume you've already met them before. So it was nice to just um, catch up with people and then we got down to business and Joanne had made these furniture legs. Sorry, they are furniture legs that she had like held on to in her crafty stash and she drilled a hole on the top so that you could put candlesticks in them and then she had put some felt on the bottom and then everyone was using some paint to paint them and just having the chats as well there was a little bit of breakfast some coffee some tea um and yeah it was just a really fun morning I am back. Before I go, I just wanted to give Joanne's book a little mention. I'm so proud of her. You know what, I think when you've been through the book process, you realise how, how much work goes, like creative energy and mental energy that goes into creating something. 
And I think sometimes people think, oh, you have a book and then you'll be rich. I'm sorry, unless you're writing Harry Potters and you're selling millions, there's not a lot in books, but they are such a, it's almost like a portfolio of your work. And I love books because it's another way of engaging with people, especially in a world where we're always online, it's always digital. There's something about a physical book that you open, you sit, you read, and you, there's no pop-up ads, there's no, it's just another way to just, yeah, read, engage, get ideas, but also not get distracted. So Joanne's book is uh, Furniture Flips and there is 25 furniture projects. So if you follow Joanne, you'll know that she does really colorful stuff. But even if you don't do kind of colorful stuff and you're looking for ideas, um, just from kind of flicking through the book, like look at her illustrations. Like she did all the illustrations and everything in this book. Like um, there is tips for painting and different techniques. Um, like she does, like her, she did all of the photography and everything for this book. Like hats off girl, like look how colorful and vibrant that is. Like that is just class. And also I love the smell of a new book. So Joanne, I know she gets all of her secondhand furniture. Um, she's from Tip, Tipperary. I think she had a thing saved for anyone who's um, in Ireland. She had a thing saved on her Instagram for her favorite uh, secondhand places to get furniture. So I think she's doing a little series um, on that. So yeah, I just thought I'd give her a little book plug. Like, look at that ombre. I can't wait to properly get stuck into this book. I had a little flick when I was at the thing, but this is like my first time seeing it as well. Um, so yeah, proud friend. Like, it just looks so good. The photography and everything, like. And I just know how much work she's put into this. So... Well done, Joanne. Well done. Um, I'll pop a link. Um, I think she is. The book is out on Monday, but when this book comes out, or sorry, when this video comes out, it will be Thursday. Um, so it'll be out already. And I think it's available on Amazon at, at the moment. I'm not sure what retailers it's in, so I'll just pop a link to it if you want to check it out. And if you are looking for any inspiration, or you can just head on over to her Instagram as well. And she also put on a deadly event this morning. So, and there was a lovely bunch of people. And you know, it was just nice to go somewhere um, do a bit of like sit, sitting down, doing a bit of painting. We were painting. She had furniture legs primed and drilled and ready to be turned into candlestick holders. So everyone got to paint one. And like that, it was just sitting and chatting and catching up with people you haven't seen in ages. And it was just a lovely morning. Well done. Well done, Joanne. I was like, Joanne, you need to organize more events. <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to leave it there for this week's video. Let me know if you have a shot at making the cushion. Um, and let me know if you do pick up Joanne's book and if you enjoy it as well. And I will see you in Sunday's garden video. If you're new to my channel as well, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the reasons, you know, the drill. Cheeky thumbs up. See you on Sunday.